Shalom. Call Hello Yahweh by Shemel Shai by Shem Rakakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth, that be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners, and to the Aquaf that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago, coming at you with another lesson in truth. And uh, videos I was listening to, I was doing cardio earlier, and um, decided I was going to go in on it. I believe he put this up last night. So, to, and, and there's a lot of good information in here, you know. I expect the markets to be volatile today. Not, uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on in the world that wasn't reported. Right here next door, a few minutes away, is Whiting. And uh, didn't wasn't even aware, I think, of as of Wednesday, last Wednesday, uh, Whiting had a fire, which was strange. Now it explains all that strange smell that was in the air over the last couple of days. But uh, right around the time of, of oil harvesting, Whiting, one of the biggest oil producers in America, uh, BP is producing no oil. So you can expect prices to, uh, to creep up. And have to show it the pump and then prices for, for for goods and services as as well, you know, as the trucks have to spend more money to uh get the stuff to you. So, you know, it, it trickles, you know, what's the old saying that shit rolls downhill. But there was a couple things that he said uh, that triggered, you know, uh some scriptures that came to mind. And uh so I'm just gonna play some of this video and then uh you know and then give some scriptural commentary on it so without any further ado yeah rethinking the dollar forget the brother's name but let's go and so at this current moment i, I don't see why people even take uh that guy serious whatsoever just because everything they say is not geared towards helping the average joe is more so front running hmm. and uh, using his so-called fed speech to help out the markets but it's going to be more economic pain no matter what and that's why I think one of the biggest things is literally. Wow. Now in that scripture was 50, uh, Psalms 55 and 21. And it says the words of his mouth were smoother than butter. But war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil. Yet they were drawn swords. As a matter of fact, let's get another one. There's a similar scripture too. About that softer than butter. Um, So lucky I got a message. Let me turn this off. Well, that throws a monkey wrench and everything, but okay. All right, Salakia, Salakia. That was uh work. I have to deal with that. But uh, let's go with Psalms. Uh, not Psalms, but Proverbs. Five and three. And it reads, For the lips of the strange woman drop as in honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. And a honeycomb, I got to actually have a honey with the honeycomb in it in the kitchen. And it is extremely sweet. Natural real honey from real bees. And basically, the media, big business, they're going to give you, get, you know, put these people up to give these grand speeches to get the people to believe in the system and the things that they're doing or try to cover up what they're doing with smooth speeches and smooth words. All right. So this is also talking about, you know, the philosophies uh, of Esau Edom, who is the wicked. All right. Who happens to be uh, the people who refer to themselves as Caucasians. At least those of them that are not other people, right? Because remember what you always learn on this channel and the channels like it, that this is not about color, all right? The so-called white man came up with that false narrative of color. This is about seed line. We understand that it's not your color that determines your race, but the sperm line you came from, all right? Because there are people just as dark as this brother who came from the sperm line of, of uh, what people ignorantly refer to as white people. So when you look like him, but your father is white, well, guess what you are? Exactly. So the father, the sperm is what determines your nationality. 
And that's, you know, the parable of the wheat and the tares. All right. That's exactly what that is. OK, so uh, let's proceed with uh, what he's talking about here. Let's go. This window of time that we have before either winter hits energy, you know, prices go up similar to what's happening in the Europe area or there's issues with the you know, retail sector and food and things of that nature. Making sure that uh, you secure as much of the stuff you need, knowing that you can't, you know, completely isolate yourself. You can't go in a bunker and live for the rest of your life until things blow over because it won't blow over. It's going to be a, we're in a transition process into something new. And so, yeah, enjoy the good times while they last, but definitely prepare for uh, just, you know, just more interesting times, but like that with, with of course, all along with great opportunity, man, with along with great opportunity. But before I went on, before I got that call, as always, feel free to give me a call, as well as throw out ideas and topics, whatever. Um, I was talking about, you know, primary subjects I research just for sheer information's sake, because those are things that I just feel you know, have more relevance to what the bigger picture is. Because everything we're witnessing is taking us towards, you know, we're in the midst of the reset. And so it's amazing how they were able to sell it up front two years ago, call it a great reset. All government leaders are on board with it. The people are waking up. We're resisting. They're having to adjust to things on the fly. But ultimately, they're cutting off all the, all the basically, the choke points, food, energy, and everything else in between. And so no matter what, we're going to go into a, we're entering, we're entering into a whole new realm of civilization, flat out. And then you factor in all the ways that they're doing that. And, you know, three things that really stood out, you know, stick out to me is that the mRNA with the injections are subjects that I study just to understand. Because if you look at the amount of casualties throughout the globe, you know, the numbers are, you know, we don't know the numbers. That's going to impact everybody's life. So with, so with the money uh, system and, the uh, you know, and the medical stuff, You've been duped. This is this is Daniel 8 and 25. And it says, and through his policy, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand and he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. And this scripture seems to be coming out almost every day now because he's setting up all these policies to set himself up. But in reality, it's all it's all. Uh, it's all a lie and it's all for him to gain control and for him to put himself up to where he's like a God. All right. It's a lie. All right. So it's all to set up this new, this new system. All right. Which, uh, is going to fail. All right. Job 14 and five says he has a bounds that he cannot pass. And he's not going to pass them. Then we have the currency. Rethinking the dollar is all about telling people that they are shifting a currency out of the old into the new because this current system has ran its course. And so CBDCs are coming. And then the last one is, if you guys listened to the show last week, I highlighted how Prince Charles, during the last year's conference, was highlighting how he's encouraging governments to come together and do whatever it takes to help usher in Everything that's needed for him and it, and I believe, you know, from a biblical standpoint, I believe it has a lot to do with the Antichrist. So, between the mRNA, CBDCs, and Antichrist, those are three areas that I really feel drawn to just to better understand. And see what he doesn't understand. It says the people show. First of all, the Lord is not for all people. The Lord is only for His people. He makes it very, very clear. All right, and he thinks that there's something that he's been told that there is no such thing as universal salvation. If you actually studied the Bible, you learn that. You know, they, they you, you see that. And then those of you who can't see that is because the Holy Spirit does not dwell with you. You have no understanding. All right. And as a matter of fact, the Lord is only for the elect of his own people, not all of his own people. OK, so. Uh, let me uh, go to second Ezra to say it, the. Uh, second Ezra is the sixth chapter around the 54th, 53rd verse. And it reads, um, and after these, um, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and also the people whom thou hast chosen. All this I have spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou hast made it the world for our sakes. As for the other people, which also come of Adam, 
Thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle, and has likened them to the abundant, has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. So when you go back up, it says also whom the people who have who has chosen, and that the world was created for our sakes. So it so all the other billions of people outside of the Lord's chosen, which is spoken about in Deuteronomy 76, they're like spittle. They're like, the, you know, spit, you know, like a drop of water that drops from a vessel. And so to give you a picture, if you're carrying a bucket of water that you're going to need to, to cook, bathe, drink it, it with, you're not going to stress over a drop. And the Lord can, can compare, you know, billions of lives to a drop that fall from a vessel because they don't matter to him. The only ones that matter to him are his elect, his chosen. And this guy along, he, because he's basically, you know, regurgitating Christianity, Christianism, which is false. It's made up. All right. It's completely and totally made up. And the Antichrist, all right, is anyone and anything that's against the, what's what's written in the Bible. That would be an Antichrist. So it's not one. There's not one uh, particular thing that you're looking for. Some person going to rise up with the 666 tattooed on his face, in his forehead, uh, on the back of his neck. Or in his scalp, like in Damien movies, and all of a sudden his wings sprout and his horns sprout, and he starts flying all over the place, controlling everyone. That's 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 those are, are, are myths, doctrines of man. This is Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, and it says, Let us hear the whole conclusion of the matter. Fear God, keep the commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment, which it with every secret thing. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. So this whole currency thing, it was secret. Now it's being made public and it's going to be destroyed by the Lord. All right. He's going to bring it under subjection. So it's going to fail. All right. So let's go to the. Uh, let's go to the to the like the 35th minute mark. All right. Because uh, everything that Esau Edom is trying to do. You know, the actual, you know, and for lack of understanding. So you people understand what I'm talking about. So-called white people, but the, not just uh, someone who's got pale flesh, but someone who is really an Edomite. Because once again, you got people who have pale flesh, who have fathers. Once we're going to use them as an example again, that looks like him. All right. It only takes one or two generations for all the melanin to be gone. But the sperm line still to be of his seed, but it looked completely not like him. And a great example of that is if you look at, uh, 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 you know, some of these professional ball players, you know, that uh, that have, you know, uh, you know, pale mothers and dark fathers. And then they grow up and then they marry a pale woman and then their child looks like a straight up so-called white woman. You know, I could think of several different uh, athletes that, that are perfect examples of, of, of that. All right. And then vice versa. So, you know, it's not about color, man. You you people who stuck on color, you really the Lord's not dealing with you, man. He's really not. OK, but um, how the things that Esau searched out. Well, you know, let's grab that real quick, too, and let this last. Uh, this last little portion play. That's an Obadiah. All right. The Bible is the answer. But let's grab it anyway. Let's read it. Because Esau con controls the world right now. Esau eat him. Okay. And one of the biggest things he did was he, he, you know, he, he put that covering cast over all the people and created that cast of confusion. And, and he, he made up this thing about color and race. When in, in prior times, no one cared about your color. They cared about who your father was because that's how they attached you to a particular people. But Obadiah 1 and 6, it reads, how are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things, his hidden things sought up? All right. And so race and his and his control over the people through the control of economy, through food, through money systems, all that's being brought to the uh, uh, to the forefront. And, and the people are turning against him, you know, like the BRICS countries. You know, a matter of fact, let's read the next verse. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. And they that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. So I can give you a perfect example. Something recent is that Belarus was once a part of the 
you know, the Esau system and down with them. But Belarus is now siding with the BRICS country and with Russia. And Belarus made a, a threat to U.S. and NATO about nuking them. So they said they were, you know, about shooting ICBMs and dropping bombs from said they will fit their regular planes with uh, with 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 uh, ICBM uh, uh, type or uh, 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 nuclear capability. And said they Belarus said this. So they made a direct threat to NATO and, and the West and the U.S. All right. Facts. So allies, the people that were once allies with America are turning against them. All right. And it's because of their policies. Hell, citizens of America are turning against America collectively because they're being wronged by their government. And they see that their government is trying to start some completely new. They keep talking about this new this new uh, uh, world order and all this, you know, this new order and all WEF, whatever they want to call it, the who are all these people that are part of it and what that's doing. As a matter of fact, something just went out where they're trying to make a universal thing with all the countries that are down with this to where in the event of an emergency, all nations constitutions will fall under one and you know, which they're going to use uh, more than likely a, 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 a medical thing to control everyone. All right. And that's what they're doing right now. They're implementing a universal constitution to override all the countries, all these different countries, individual constitutions. That's going to cause a problem with a lot of the people. But, but the majority of people are so brainwashed and stupid and docile, you know, they just going, you know, they just going to bend over. But some people are, are not going to take it. They're not going to bend over. Just because they're working towards something. And it has nothing to do with our betterment. It's all about further enslaving us even more. And so those are just subjects that I feel like I should be touching on. Just because we all know, you know, you know the financial side of things, we know where things are heading. But then again, what really bothers me and troubles me the most is that between now and that time, there's going to be an unimaginable amount of lives lost. Yes. And I just feel like, you know, those are human souls that God loves. And I am called. The Lord is, 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 is only loves his elect. And he's the one that says that the Lord and the Lord is responsible for all death. All right. Matter of fact, let's get a couple of scriptures to uh, to substantiate that. And see, this is these people that love to get on these platforms. I say, man, just give the the give the uh, the, the 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 news and give the financial news and leave the Bible out of it because you don't understand. This is Isaiah 45 and seven. And it reads, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Yahweh, the Lord, all capital letters, do all these things. So the Lord creates evil, all right? And so it's, it pleases him. He, he, the, so he's behind. He sanctions the death when it happens. Who you think sends all the, the storms and, and the, the earthquakes that kill and destroy, would sweep people away and crush them and bury them in the earth? The Lord does that, all right? This is a... Uh, Isaiah 29 and, and, and 6, and it says, Thou shalt be visited of the Lord, Yahweh, all capital letters, of the Lord of hosts, Lord of armies, all right, with small, uh, 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 with thunder and with earthquake and with great noise and with storm and tempest and flame of devouring fire, all right, wildfire, storms, golf ball size, uh, uh, tennis ball size hail has killed people and livestock that the people need to eat. Storms have swept them away, earthquakes, waters, floods all over, around the globe. The Lord did it. So, my man, plenty of Israelites been calling on your show. You're being hard-headed, bro. You need to stop putting that razor to your head, too. All right? That's, that's, that's going off. The Lord said, don't do that. Now, it's supposed to round the corners of your, of your head with the, to put a razor to it, man. All right? Um, this dude constantly going off, man. After he's been warning, he's been told. Okay. Um, but let me see. Let me see what there's a little bit more. And I believe if you're a believer in Christ, it's your responsibility as well to help the kingdom. It's our responsibility, man. So those are things that's on my mind. But anyway, I'm ranting too much. Give me a call. Feel free to do so. Uh -oh. Now he now opened up the phone line. So I didn't really listen too much past that outside of the first caller. But he said... Uh, imaginable amount of lives lost and i just feel like you know those are human souls that god loves and I so yeah so going back these unimaginable amount of lives lost that's prophesied and it has to happen you know have the the prophecies and have a cook you know the 
you know, when you read Second Ezra, the ninth chapter, that has to happen. And they're ushering in that new system where you won't be able to buy, sell, or trade, which can, takes you directly to Revelation 13, 16, the MOTB. All right. So with that, man, I'm going to give all praises, all honor and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakakwadash, Wa'abah, Babah, Kwam, Yasharala, Shalom.